decisions. Now, I personally, I care a lot about you guys who watch this channel. I really want you guys to be successful in, in your life, no matter what you do. Keep perspective, keep a good heart, keep a good attitude, no matter what is happening to you in the world. And I guarantee you'll come out smiling in the end. Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. It's 2022 and it's been a crazy year for growth stocks and we've seen massive declines and you could call this a stock market crash or some may call this a stock market correction. Either way, there's a lot of red portfolios around and I've received a lot of messages. So in this video, I'm gonna cover exactly why growth stocks are still down and why they're still falling. And then I'm gonna to reveal to you guys my five-step plan for handling a stock market correction or crash because it can really affect our psychology. So this is gonna be a really interesting video, guys, a really exciting video and really an insightful video to help you better manage your portfolio and your own investing psychology. So with that being said, let's not waste any time and let's dive in. So firstly, a market overview, guys. The sea of red, which is the market right now. So this is the one week performance and we can see all the tech stocks are down. Microsoft's down, Amazon's down. All these big safe names, they're all down at the moment. Amazon 11% in a week for this incredible company. Now, really, firstly, straight off the bat, guys, let me just put this into some perspective. So that's the one week performance. It has been a crazy week. The one month performance, we start seeing a little bit more green here, a little bit more green. If I go to the one year performance, we can see that most of the market is actually green, guys. So really, we do need to put things into perspective. This is a short correction, which hasn't really given up all the gains from even a year ago. So I wouldn't call this a market crash. It's definitely a correction, but still for your own personal portfolio, it can really affect your psychology. Okay, so just to lighten the mood, before I dive into exactly why growth stocks are still down, let's dive into a couple of memes because for me, that's a great psychological coping mechanism. So here's one straight away. Everyone excited for the stock market to open. This was last week and then boom, the sea of red. And it really just shows that a lot of people are in the same boat, even these major hedge fund managers. So if we look at Cathie Wood, um, there's been a great meme here. They said, Cathie Wood to rename flagship fund ARK to the Titanic after recent performance. ARK Invest, the major growth stock investor, have also seen a tremendous amount of outflows. So why are growth stocks down? And it basically it's to do with interest rates. So as interest rates are actually perceived to potentially rise, then this can affect growth stocks more because growth stocks have their cash flows predicted further into the future. And thus, if interest rates rise, there's a higher discount rate, it's called. And thus, these cash flows are discounted back further. And thus, growth stocks are not valued at as much. So if that sounds a little bit complicated to you guys, I'll dive into a few more details here. So Bill Atman actually believed, a famous investor, he believed that interest rates will rise for a few reasons. The first is, of course, record high inflation. The Fed's target is around 2% and we've seen upwards of 7% inflation, which is just crazy. And inflation is basically an inflating of prices. And this could be the cost of materials. It could be the cost of labor. And as these prices of these different aspects actually inflate in price, then this can affect a company's profits and thus affect its cash flows, which the shareholders of a company has rights too. And this is why we're seeing stock prices down. So that's why growth stocks are down. Now this won't affect every stock. Value stocks are still doing great. Cyclical stocks are still doing great. Commodity companies, mining companies, material companies, they're all doing fantastic. Oil stocks are doing fantastic. Now, would I recommend switching over to them? Well, personally, I'd say it's too late because if you're switching into them now, yes, this may last another one year, two years, or it might last another couple of months. Nobody really knows. The Federal Reserve says inflation is transitory. So really, there's a few factors which nobody actually knows exactly how long this will last. And that really does impact your portfolio decisions. Somebody like ARK Invest and Cathie Wood, they have a growth stock investing strategy and they're sticking to that strategy. So we'll see how well that plays out. But for us investors, I'm going to reveal to you guys, what is my five-step plan to handling any stock market crash or correction? So let's dive right in to that. Okay, so firstly, just a quick overview. There's been plenty of stock market crashes in the past 
And since then, the stock market has continually recovered and recovered and recovered. This is definitely not a stock market crash, although it is a correction and it may feel like a crash for some of your portfolios, especially if you hold a lot of growth stocks. Now, I'm really going to take things back to first principles because I really think it helps to understand their own psychology and then we can use that to help optimize our portfolio. So why do we feel psychological pain when we see our portfolio, let's say it's red or we see a stock down? Well, this is because humans are actually what's called loss averse. So we actually feel more pain from the equivalent loss as we would from an equivalent gain. So let's say, how happy would you be, let's say, if I give you watching right now, if I give you 10K, how happy would you be? Now, make a mental note of that. Now think how unhappy would you be if you suddenly lost 10K? Now, of course, you'd rather obviously have the 10K, but imagine you lost the 10K. How much pain would you feel mentally? And usually for most people, it's usually two to three times more painful to lose the 10K than to gain the 10K. And really that is loss aversion. And that is why most investors, for most people, it's good to try and minimize your losses, diversify, run a safe portfolio in order to minimize this psychological pain. Now, evolutionary speaking, this really did help us because if we actually had a fear of losses, we'd be less risk-taking as a person and thus we'd less likely get into crazy situations, fighting with lions, etc. when we're all living in caves. Okay, so here's my five-step plan to help you guys out. The first step is to keep perspective. Any losses which you have in your portfolio, any stocks which are down, they're only paper losses until you sell. If you know what you own, if you know the business that you own, remember a stock is a portion of a company. It's not this crazy ticker symbol which moves up and down each and every day. It's a portion of a company. And if you know what you own, then really that should really hamper and delay any psychological effect. For example, I listen to the earnings calls of a lot of companies, I feel like I know them inside out. So if I see the stock down 10%, 20%, it doesn't really bother me because I understand the business, I understand what's going on and the reasons for that decline. For example, Amazon. So Amazon stock, as I'm speaking right now, is down 22% from its highs. Now, last month, everybody was talking about how amazing Amazon was, and the business hasn't changed. I'm still ordering on Amazon. I'm sure you guys were ordering on Amazon. The business is still strong. Yes, have they had some effects from labor shortages and inflation and material costs and air freight shipping costs? Yes, these are all factors which are affecting Amazon. Is Amazon in probably the best position out of anyone to get through these issues? Yes, they actually have a fleet of planes. They're manufacturing their own shipping containers. Okay, step number two is to know your own psychology. So I've touched on this briefly previously, but understand yourself, investing is extremely personal. What may be okay for somebody else is not okay for you. Could you see your portfolio drop 10%, 20%, 30%? How would that make you feel? And if it would make you feel really bad and maybe affect your mental health, then it's probably best not to invest into those type of maybe more volatile stocks, small cap stocks, etc. It's You're probably better off investing into more funds and large cap stocks. I personally try to not invest any money which I couldn't afford to lose. Now, this is very hard to do because, of course, nobody wants to lose any money. But let's say you do have a portion of your money, you have your rainy day fund, you have a portion for your living costs, you have your wages, your salary, etc. And then you just have some extra money and you decide to invest that. Okay, so here's some psychological coping mechanisms to deal with a stock market crash or correction. Now, I think these are fantastic. The first one, I try to do this myself and it's very difficult, is to not check your portfolio daily. It can be very tempting you want to feel like you've got control and you want to check and do something. You feel like I need to do something if stocks are down, etc. So you want to check your portfolio daily, but you don't really want to do that because what happens is you're tying your self-esteem, your confidence to your portfolio performance. So if the stocks are going up and everything's great, you'll feel fantastic. You'll feel great. You'll feel really smart and intelligent. And if stocks are going down, then you'll not feel so good and you'll feel unhappy and sad. Now, Really, you don't want your happiness and your confidence and your self-esteem to be dictated by your stock portfolio. So the solution is to not check your portfolio daily. Warren Buffett says he likes to invest into companies for the super long term, where if the stock market closed for five, 10 years, it wouldn't actually bother him. So 
Those are the type of investments that I think are actually the best ones to look for because psychologically, you won't really be bothered about the day-to-day -day stock moves. Okay, the second psychological coping mechanism is to keep a sense of humor. Now, I did say about the memes, and I think they're fantastic. They do work. That This is how they've come about, really. It's a psychological coping mechanism. Um, there's a few more I'll jump into here. Inflation can't be that high. This is inflation that high. Um, you've got Jeff Bezos here, the, the 2021 positions on bag holding. That's a funny one there. And it really does help to give you perspective that you're not alone. And if your stocks are down, you're similar to many other big hedge funds, even ARK Invest. Okay, so step number three to managing your psychology is to invest for the long term. Now, I know it's easy to say, and it's very hard to do. Then you can actually have a bit of perspective on these companies and say, okay, will that company be better in five years? Will it be better in 10 years? Step number four is to diversify. Now, I know this is really a common investing tip which is given to diversify across different stocks, funds, asset classes, geographies, etc. But I do want to bring to your attention, guys, a little strategy which I do love and I think this suits my own personal psychology quite well and maybe it will some of yours. So this is called the barbell strategy. So with a barbell strategy, as you can see here, like the weight barbell, you have two sides to your portfolio, shall I say. One is very safe, let's say free cash flow generating assets. For me, I like this to be property. I like this to be real estate, something which is physical, something which has rental cash flow, something which is really stable and there's not a stock market price attached to it. They are the assets which I love for my safe, secure assets. And honestly, I'd like more and more of those type of assets. And then really the very risky side of the portfolio, you could say volatile side, which is how much things move up and down, that could be your stocks. Now on the safe side, again, you could have stable funds, you could maybe have bond funds, and you, you could even have large cap. And you could even have large cap funds such as the S&P 500, a global equity fund portfolio, etc. And then on the risky side, you can have a few individual stocks. Now, the beauty of this strategy is, let's say your risky stocks all drop by 50%. And if you have all these safe, secure real estate property, REITs, etc., on one side of your portfolio, then it really won't affect your psychology too much. And you'll actually make better investing decisions because you could probably take some of that cash from the safe assets and move it into the more volatile assets, which are more of a long-term play. So I, this is just a strategy I like. Let me know if you guys think this strategy is quite interesting and maybe I'll do a full video on it in the future. Now, if you guys are finding value in this video so far, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. It helps out tremendously with the channel. If you haven't subscribed and joined the family yet, feel free by hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on. And we do have our VIP group, which is first link in the description below where you can access exactly which stocks I'm personally buying, selling, my entire portfolio. You can ask me questions. You can ask questions about the group. We've got a fantastic group in there. You can access all that and more and all the stock research platform I do and, and all the stock research and valuation models, etc. So check out that first link in the description below. With that being said, let's get on to my last point. And that is, we need to remember guys, stocks are cheaper. The sale is on. Now I know this is an overused term and I'm not suggesting you guys go and buy the dip because that's really an overused tactic as well. But I would say we do need to remember if you have got free cash there, if you have got a large cash balance, then now is a good time to actually add. I wouldn't recommend going crazy, but maybe add to certain positions which you think are great investments for the long term. Okay, so that's today's video, guys. Just some final thoughts for you guys. Your health and your happiness are the most important things in your life. I personally on this channel, I start this channel to really just document my own investing journey and try and help some people along the way, give them tips and advice, etc. None of this is financial advice and none of these, any, any other YouTubers you watch are, are financial advice you should always make your own independent investing decisions. Now, I personally, I care a lot about you guys who watch this channel. I really want you guys to be successful in, in your life, no matter what you do. But remember, your health, your happiness, they're the most important things. Money, you can't take it with you when you go anywhere. So just remember that, guys. Keep perspective, keep a good heart, keep a good attitude, no matter what is happening to you in the world. And I guarantee you'll come out smiling in the end. So with that being said, guys, if you do want to be part of our VIP group or learn how to be a successful investor, 
check out our stock research platform investing course first link in the description below with that being said thank you guys so much for watching thank you for continually supporting this channel over these past few years i wish you all luck in the markets and invest safe